Bill, how do I close this guy? And at the end of the day, it comes down to those three factors, those three motivational drives. And if you can keep this top of mind all the time. process and that it is your hook story and then offer and the only reason that a funnel doesn't work is that the story isn't good and therefore the hook could be great and the offer could be amazing but it doesn't convert it doesn't sell anybody because the story isn't right or that the story's great and the hook is great but people aren't clicking through and purchasing. And so therefore they just don't buy. If you haven't identified the highest level of the client's desire, why do they want to purchase our car, truck, van, or SUV? Then it's really difficult for you to hone in on the hot buttons, maximize the time that you have with them to make buying that much easier. Do you know what I mean? When, when, we, when we don't really know why, they want to buy it. Is it the color? Is it the towing capacity? Is it the size? Is it fuel economy? Is it just to get a new one because their family member purchased a new one? What is the desire? Where does that come from? And it may be as simple as you just ask him, you know, what's stimulating and motivating you at this point in time to want to move forward and purchase a new vehicle? Now, if desire has been met, and you unquestionably know exactly what they're after, this is like the hook story and offer, right? If the desire is the hook, and they really would like to have your product, then let's now talk about the fear. And the fear is the story. And the story is what will happen if they don't take advantage of purchasing your, your product right now, right? With automobiles, the fear that we came through during the inventory shortage was you're not going to be able to get one. If you don't sign up right now, you all know this, it's going to be gone. Once you've accomplished, you know exactly what the desire is. So there's the hook, right? You know what brought them in. You know the, maybe it was the offer. Maybe it's the interest rate. Maybe it's just good timing. Maybe it's the color. Obviously, when we have a new model introduction, that's the hook. Wow, look at what this one can do. And of course, so much of the features that are on our automobiles, right? How do we overcome these bi-weekly monthly payments of what customers had before with double, triple, and quadruple what they have to pay now to get into the, what they want? Well, if you haven't built that value bridge, going back to product presentation, step number three of the manifesto, if you haven't got the overview, benefit, permission, commitment strategy down of step number two, then you're not building that value bridge. But until the value of that vehicle has exceeded $1 of your asking price, then you got your work cut out for you. And that comes back to the hook, the story, and then the offer. If your offer is more expensive than the perceived value, then it won't work, right? right? So if we've got a customer that purchases an automobile that is highly desirable and they'd like to have it more frequently, if they're buying the exact same vehicle, why would they pay more to go with the exact same car? And the only reason they would pay more is that the price has gone up or that the offer isn't the same as what it was before, meaning the interest rate isn't the same. Why would they buy? Because they are excited about having a new vehicle frequently. And that's a buyer behavior. And that's what step number one is all about with the dynamic buyer odyssey, right? Understanding those four buyer behaviors. That doesn't work with enthusiasts. That doesn't work with listeners. And it Oh, it would work great with talkatives, but that's the beer budget and the champagne taste, right? Value bridge, it's, that's an activity that you complete. That just doesn't happen. The customer doesn't walk right across it like, like we envision in our mind. You need to build the value bridge. And, so the, and that goes back to the hook. Is the hook, that could be color, could be features, could be trim level. Remember, the customer is going to tell us, oh, it's all the same. It's all exactly the same. In fact, I found it for less money down the road with more stuff on it. But can you tell me what your best price is? And that should speak volumes about their level of, but when we build that value bridge about 
why our product is better than the other. And the when we talk about product, start to open your parameters about defining product. Product is not only the automobile that they would like to purchase, but you've heard me say this before, especially in the on-demand online system, and you'll, you'll hear it quite eloquently in step number two, and then step number five and six, closing and negotiating, that whom you buy your automobile from is almost or more important than what automobile that you buy. And step number two, where we're, we're listing at the activities that lead to the sale, customers have transcended a process. And that process is thinking, talking, research. In the research phase, they are going through in their mind, how much is it? Who should I get it from? Is, is that dealership and automobile uh, a reputable organization? And lastly, the salesperson. Research that before they ever come to talk to us. And this is why I say, whom you buy your automobile from is almost as important or more important than in fact what you buy. Because so when you think of your product, don't hesitate to pat yourself on the back. Don't hesitate to boost you up a little bit. You know, this is the reason why we have awards and recognition is that the customer has asked for our help. The customers walked into us and that is because our hook is so great. And even when that customer says the extended warranty on the exact same unit is more desirable somewhere else, then really what you should be saying to that customer is what are you doing here? You're thinking, what are the steps? What's the thing I can overcome? Uh, it's money. Money is holding them back. Um, uh, what's another thing? Look, problems can be defined in two capacities. It is either drama or it is math. Why is the client? You got to ask yourself this. If they could actually get better down the road for less, that's a math problem, right? Then all we have to do is solve the math. This is what we can do it for. And you can have it right now. Here's the thing. How many of us move to spot delivery as an offer to help this client make the decision? What if the client really wants to deal with you, but they're just trying on for size? They can't in good faith just accept the fact that they, they're missing out on a two, three, four, five, six thousand dollar warranty on the exact same product. I get that. You're right. The value bridge hasn't been completed, but you can comp complete the value bridge by saying we can't compete with that. And you'll you know, when you bring it into the service department here to do service with us, if that is the case and you want to do so, you're going to be treated like everybody else. If I could have it ready for you in an hour, would that help you make your decision? Make it as affordable as you possibly can by moving to a weekly payment. The fact that the value exceeds our asking price by $1. Comparing the old payment versus the new payment, subtracting the two, and then selling them on the difference figure, right? So for instance, if, if you have a... $250 or $300 bi-weekly and make this difficult for me. We're moving to a $500 and a $600 bi-weekly on the new truck. Now I'm assuming that that $250, $300 bi-weekly is a four-year-old and older vehicle. So now $500 bi-weekly on a brand new vehicle. The advantage that you have here, breaking that down on a weekly basis, could make that more affordable. The client looks at it and they go, yeah, maybe I'm being a little unrealistic. In our particular case, we go from a $250, $300 bi-weekly on a four, five, six, seven-year-old, 10-year-old truck to a $500, $600, $800 bi-weekly on a brand new vehicle then you need to build that value. That would be talking about safety, obviously performance, and all of this is covered extensively in step number three of the walk around presentation. The appearance alone, the LED lights. Look, four years ago, we did not have at least 25 features on our automobiles that we have right now today. And the one feature with one manufacturer, unfortunately, I can only pick one manufacturer on this, which I think we're all gonna have very shortly, is smart cruise control. Adaptive cruise control was not widespread with every single manufacturer only four and five years ago. So that in itself is a reason to build the value bridge, demonstrate that our vehicle, the new one is $1 worth more than what the others are. But I, I get it. Your customer saying, yeah, but it's gone up two, three, four times. 
this is where you have to demonstrate to them that that two, three, four times is justified. Understand this from step number from the second step of the manifesto, the customers transcended those buying decisions. They have thought about it. Should I get a new truck? They've talked it over with someone who will support their decision. That could be a spouse, that could be a dad, could be a mom, could be a grandparent, could be a best friend, coworker, neighbor. Days, weeks, months, years ago. We have no idea when that happens, but we know that they've transcended this process and you must speak to that on a regular basis. Because in the research, the client has seen the advertisement. Now they're looking at the fourth step, Right, coming in and seeing your vehicles when you're closed or going down to the National Auto Show that, and they're walking through all the manufacturers and they're seeing all the prices. Not to mention, if they do any kind of a search on their phone, they're going to get a ton more material and advertisements in their feed on that particular brand. And Remember in 2020, vehicle price went up by almost 22%. In 2021, went up by just 20%. What I really want you to get, everybody, is think fast on your feet. You think fast on your feet when you anticipate the challenges and the objections of the problems that are going to come up and challenges and problems are categories in two capacities, right? And that is drama or math. Drama would be, look, it's the same vehicle. Okay. I'm, I've, I'm driving a King Ranch, but I realize I'm looking at a platinum, but there, these are not the exact same thing. And you can tell a customer, look, I know you've thought about this. I know you've done your research. I know this isn't a surprise. I don't get it. Our, what they're telling you, this is where we need to think really fast. What they're telling you is a two time, three time, four time bi weekly increase in their vehicle budget is not affordable. And of course, we can fix that with a less expensive vehicle, right? If you can't go to a model down, if you can't go just to a trim level and a model down, then you have to consider a pre owned. Sometimes the yeah. challenge is really quite easily addressed by recognizing that how does it make any sense for me to, to match the same price that is for you.